Hi guys and welcome to another Zoom chat. Today I'm very happy to have with me Sukabuzo Notche from the Sharks and Springbok Loose Forward. Sukabuzo, thanks so much for joining us and how's life in lockdown? Yeah, thanks Craig. Thanks for having me. Um, it's been tough to be honest. Um, not been able to obviously play rugby, um, to be able to only just train at the moment because everyone is just training but we don't know whether you know, we're going to be playing or not, you know. Um, so we just, you know, just grateful that I can at least like train. And, um, but yeah, I'm grateful that I'm alive as well. For sure. And uh, I'm sure of anyone, uh, you must have been one of the players particularly frustrated by the, the sudden end to the competition. I mean, you were in some amazing form at the beginning of the season. Maybe just chat us through your, um, you know, your initial first few games for the Sharks, uh, how much enjoyment you got out of that and, and what was key to you playing so well? Um, well, for me, it was just obviously game time. I think, you know, um, I think if you can ask any sort of rugby player, you know, um, you only strive when you get game time. And obviously, I was struggling down in Cape Town with, you know, a game time. So, um, and then I got to Durban, you know, where everything sort of just happening for me, you know. Um, I knew that I had to earn the boys' respect by training well, first and foremost. Um, but you can train well, but at the end of the day, I had to also deliver on the field. So, But believing in myself, obviously, I knew that if I, you know, train well, you know, I, I know that I can sort of deliver. And I believed in my talents and my and my attributes and what I can contrib contribute to the team. So, and, you know, the, the staff also made it sort of easy for me, um, you know, having Sean, you know, as an experienced um, coach who's coached or being an assistant um, at the Sharks, who've been in the Sharks system for a while, sort of like knowing, you know, other players. And he sort of said to me, like, he's like, watched me play, you know, sort of grow up into the Western province ranks and he knows what I can sort of um, add and he just simplified it for me and said, I must go out there and just play rugby. Don't, don't worry about anything else. And, and I've, I haven't had that, you know, in a while since, you know, John Dobson was my sort of under-21 coach or something like that. So it was really nice to be in that space again where, you know, there's no sort of like great cloud over my, over my head. 100%. And, I mean, at the beginning, I wasn't even sure if I should introduce you as a, a loose forward or, or specifically num number eight. I mean, it seems like there has been a bit of a change yeah. in position clarity around where you're focusing your talents. Uh, do you feel that way as well? I mean, do you, do you think number eight is, is kind of where the Sharks have given you direction and where you will settle and specialise going forward? Well, it's, um, number eight is, is, is the position. Um, but we, wherever the team needs me to fill in, um, I'll, I'll fill in and, and, and play the best um, and give my best um, ability there. You know, when I had these, um, I think I've, I've asked Rassi what, like, before, because obviously he was, he was a quality loose forward in his time. And I asked him, coach, where do you see, where do you see, like, if, if you had to say, like, for me personally, where, where do you see myself? And he said, Look, you, you're a loose forward that could also cover six, you know, for us. So, and, and that for me was, was sort of like, a, at least I can, you know, adapt and I can play, you know, if needed, you know, um, other positions. But my specific position is number eight. So that was, you know, a good thing for me. At least I don't just come into a team and I just give one sort of position. I can, you know, um, also play six as well, if needed. Sure. And it seemed like at the Sharks, um, one of the, the obviously they, they under Sean Everett and seemed to be embracing a, a new style of play. And, and key to that was the yeah. mobility of the forwards and to have a, a linking sort of number eight, such as yourself. I mean, uh, having, um, having that key role in, in, in being able to play with a bit more freedom um, and ensure that there is that, that link between the forwards and the backs. I mean, with, with that and, and with the extended game time and some consistency in starting, um, did you feel your confidence growing game on game as you managed to get some some real uh, quality game time under the belt? Yeah, with no doubt, um, Craig. I think, as I said at the start, you know what I mean. If if you as a rugby player you get more games like game time. I mean, I, I only I played less. I was playing eighty minutes for six games. It was only one game against the Reds where. Um, I came off on 75 minutes, I think. 
you know, um, with that game time, I promise you, you grow an arm and a leg. Um, your confidence is up. You know what I mean? Because you know that if you do a mistake or make a mistake or whatever the case may be, you, you know, it, it's fine. You know, no one is, is, is judging you or, you know, it's just carry on, you know, just get yourself into another battle or another battle. You know, you'll be fine out there. So uh, without no doubt, if you get more game time, as I said, you, you grow an arm and a leg and, you know, you start, you know, you start enjoying yourself out there. You know what I mean? And you, you start doing, you start becoming yourself and the things that you, you know, that your talents start coming out and you also get like, you know, surprised of the things that you do sometimes because, you know, um, for me personally this year, I was, you know, um, so happy that I, I could be able to do things that I was not willing, like was not able to do, you know, previously, you know what I mean? Because I yeah. was just in this box. I was just boxed in this box where this is how it's, it's, it's going to go. And if it doesn't go this way, then, you know, unfortunately we'll have to look at someone else. But now I've got that thing where I don't, a coach doesn't mind, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm free, you know, I could do something, you know, but obviously it comes with responsibility. You know what I mean? I'm just not saying just, you know, uh, chuck a ball willy nilly, you know, but you can do something that you are sure of that it, this is going to, like, it's going to, it's going to pull off. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And, and I was sh like, it's, I was shocked when you watch it, when you watch them now, you're shocked, but you knew that you had them, you know, you had them, but they were not, they were not allowed to be exposed. Sure. And one of the reasons we also wanted to catch up is obviously we, we've got you featured in our, our latest magazine. And I thought one of the, yeah. the quite cool anecdotes that uh, we were in that story was just at your arrival at the Sharks, you spoke of uh, Dave Williams, assistant coach there, uh, kind of giving you an instruction or, or asking a question that for you initially seems quite surprising, but uh, obviously clicked in, in terms of giving you a bit of um, direction about the way you wanted to settle in at the Sharks. Could you maybe just touch on that again? Yeah. And, and kind of what he asked you and, and, and yeah. what it brought out of you. Yeah. Jeez, I got goosebumps now. It was a bit like a bit scary because um, I love attack. Um, you know, it's not that I, I neglect defense, but he called me in because um, they have obviously worked in different, um, you know, different franchises, different, you know, um, been overseas, Bath, you know, and he's worked with players individually. So he calls me in and he says, let's have a, like a one-on-one -on -one sort of a thing. Let's create a pathway. You know, um, the first question that he asked me on day one, like when I, when I arrived, he said, you know, what are you doing here? You know? And for me, it gave me a shock. I was like, well, what do I, what do I say to this guy? Like, you know, what, I've never been asked a question like that. You know, what are you doing here? What are you, what are you, you know? And then I find myself, you know, asking, okay, cool. I never got game time with, like, and then I said game time. You know, I want to have game time so that I can showcase my talents. I feel like I was restricted a bit. And, you know, I, I want this thing to happen. Um, to be honest, Craig, I thought, you know, shots was my last shot. If I don't get this thing right here, right now, you're just one of those players that, yeah, that just didn't, it just didn't happen for you. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. going like south now. So I had to make this thing. Mentally, I was in a good space. You know, I put a lot of pressure on myself. But at the same time, I knew this was my, like, my last, like, dice. And then we, we just went on. And then we just went on and he said um, that, you know, what makes, of a, like, what makes a good loose forward and a good eighth man, you know. And I just kept on, like, writing things down, like, okay, cool, good tackling, <laughs> good linking between the forwards and the backs. You must be like an all-rounder sort of a loose forward. And then, you know, I would, miss, I would miss out something in my list. And then he will sort of like try to catch me on and say, oh, but don't you need good hands? Like, you know, it became like, you know, a conversation, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed. You know what I mean? And then he left me. Um, he left me in two, I think, two minutes. He said, draw a picture that's going to describe you this season. So I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, let me think. Um, I think I'll send you, I'll send you this picture. He actually sent it to me yesterday. I think he bought a copy and he sent it to me. Oh, cool. Um, uh, and then I drew a shark. I drew a shark. 
I did a sketch in two minutes. I did a sketch of a shark, and then I did, uh, and then I did um, a smoke, a smoke behind the shark, and then I wrote on top of it, "Full flight," you know. And then he came back. He stepped into the office again. He said, um, "Explain this picture now to me." I said, "Dave, I, um, I want to be a shark that week in and week out. That's going to be on full flight, not one off this weekend." and one like on this weekend. Sure. So I wanna be the shark that's gonna be on full flight. And then he said to me, let's meet up every single Monday and discuss this. Were you, full, were you, a, full sh were you a, a full flight shark at this, at this game? And I said to me, I was like, okay, cool. Here's someone who's willing to help me, you know, grow as a player. Um, let me let me buy into this and let's work together and we'll do drills eighth man drills off the scrum um tackling you know and we'll take like dave was big on let's take tapes of these things and sit down with them and then watch them and i'll take tapes and everything the guys the analysis at the sharks will send it to me on whatsapp and then i'll come back to dave you know it's it's something that is ball aching you know what I mean? But yeah. when I look at it, when I look, when I look at it now, and I was like, it's all worth it because, for example, you look at my pimpy's try, the last try of my pimpy in our last game against the Stormers. Yeah. How I passed, we won, we won the scam off the base of the scam, and I passed the ball to Kevin Bosch. It's a small thing, but for us and Dave, it was always like, you know, it's a, when when a, a supporter looks at it, they'll say, yeah, he's meant to pass that, anyways. You know what I mean? I was under pressure and I managed to pass the ball. And Dave will say to me, that is world class. Because a lot of people in the stands won't look at that and say that's world class. But you managing, a scrum is wheeling, another eighth man would pick that thing up by himself and go and create another breakdown. But yeah. you have the awareness to pass that ball off the base. Scrum is not doing well. Pressure from the opposition nine and getting at him, my pimpy scoring, and it was quick hands from Kerwin Bosch to Andre Estes into my pimpy, and he scored. Now that is world class. And those sort of things for me sort of grew into me because I've got this voice that's very positive in my ear. Sure. And yes, there's negative, but it's con like it's, it's constructive negativity, if I could call it that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's just, it's positive, it's positive, and it's like, it's this and it's that. I'm like, no, man, you know? Get out of this negativity. This guy's positive. We work with this guy. And since then, I was like, um, it, it was a match, a match met in heaven, basically, you know, as the old cliche goes. And I was just happy. And I was, I was bummed, to be honest, Craig. I was really bummed to, for the season to end like that, obviously. Um, because obviously, you know, I had my ambitions. I wanted, to be honest with you, I wanted to be a Springbok again, you know, because every single rugby player wants to be a springbok you know they would be bullshitting you if they told you that they don't want to be springbok yeah. so i wanted to boost my six caps you know i wanted to you know go out there and just prove with game time you know if a player gets game time this is what can happen you know what i mean so for me i just you know i just i just met my match uh, and then you know when when we when it happened it was like i'm here now you know yeah. i'm enjoying myself so Let's go, you know? 100%.